Hi, it's Sonia with 2x2 two two Legoto and Farms. Um, coming to you to talk to you about um, more Legoto information. Um, people call and want to know uh, a little bit about us, which I've already talked about in another video. Um, but they want to know about our process. Um, how to get one of our dogs, how we raise our dogs. And um, first and foremost, I like to tell people that our dogs are part of our family. They're indoors with us, um, living underfoot. Our puppies are born right here in our homeschooling room, actually. Um, and so they're a part of all the busyness that happens on our farm and with our life, um, which makes for a very happy, well-balanced, very socialized, very well-adjusted puppies. Um, they're bomb-proof. They just roll with it. Um, a couple of other things about us. Um, we do require a questionnaire. Um, that's um, so we know a little bit about you. Um, then we like to share and exchange references. Um, what we're looking for in references, um, maybe this is your first puppy. Maybe you've never had, um, any experience with a veterinarian before. Um, so this would be somebody who can vouch for you. It can be a family member, a neighbor, a friend, um, somebody you work with, somebody who can just tell us, um, hey, these people aren't crazy, and they're going to do a great job raising a puppy. Um, um, and we exchange references, meaning we give you ours too. You get um, both our veterinarian references, our repro vet, who helps us with all our reproductive decisions um, about our dogs, and our regular vet, who handles all our day-to-day -day routine um, care and um, we have known our vet for about 10 years. Um, you'll also get, um, references from other people who have owned or currently own, um, our dogs, including our Aussies. We've got, um, references that date back, you know, 20 and 30 years. People who have, um, two and three dogs from us over the years, um, are included in that also. We also include references for those of you who might want to um, show and ultimately breed your Legoto, people who we have co-owned um, dogs with. That's the only way to get one of our um, show or breeding dogs is um, a co-ownership and we're happy to exchange um, contracts so that you can see what we're obligating ourselves to because um, we both obligate ourselves, not just with a companion, but also in the show and ultimately the breeding um, animals, we, we obligate ourselves to things such as um, uh, health clearances, um, who is responsible for um, obtaining those. Um, now our companion animals, um, there's a guarantee and a warranty that we're happy to share on the front end as well. It's written. Um, and um, we've been doing this almost 30 years, so we're not going anywhere. Um, and that's one of the things, whether you get a puppy from us or not, we want to make sure that you get a dog from a reputable breeder. And we're happy to um, give our thoughts if you have other questions. Um, we're not asking you to name names, of course. But if there's something you feel uncomfortable with that... Um, you just have questions about be it us or like I said, another breeder will happy, very happy to help you navigate that because this is a, you know, a 12 to 15 year commitment and you want a breeder who's been there, done that and will continue to be there and do that. Meaning do what they say they're going to do, have a long standing history of that. Um, some other things about how we raise puppies. Um, we temperament test our puppies at around the six to seven week mark. We have an outside, um, outside individuals, um, either mentors of ours or train our trainers. And when the trainer has a trainer, you know that that's getting up there. So they come in 
and do blind temperament testing, which means they scan a microchip and um, do the temperament testing. We use the Volhard temperament test. Um, you may have heard of this book, Dog Training for Dummies, um, written by um, the Volhard. They're a um, husband and wife team. And they do a marvelous do job at training, um, very motivational in their training um, pursuits. And anyway, the temperament test that they developed, um, we have used for years. We haven't placed a puppy incorrectly um, in using that. It's a very clinical approach. Um, it is a, um, um, several questions, if you will, that we ask the puppies, things that we do. We don't really ask questions of the puppy, but um, it's things we do, like we open an umbrella or we bang some pans or we um, turn the puppy upside down or we hold on to their paw, their ear for an extended period of time. Um, we're throwing a ball and all of those reactions are scored and the scores then tell us what kind of puppy we have and um it's a one to five scale um and we include that um when you make a reservation um, we include that in some documents that are initially go out with um each puppy so there's the questionnaire you fill out there's the exchange of references there's the exchange of um contract. We show you our contract so that you know what you're obligating yourself to. And then we have a, um, several conversations where we're just getting to know each other. Um, you're asking your questions, I'm asking mine. Um, and most of mine have to do with your ability to care for the puppy, your ability to provide um, proper vet care and training, your willingness to get training, um, not just buying the puppy and keeping it at home. That's not training. Um, and our requirements for um, a well-trained puppy, which you'll thank me for later, are at the very minimum um, a puppy manners class, which is anywhere from four to six weeks, and a basic obedience class, which is anywhere from six to eight weeks. And when you consider um, those 10 to 12 weeks once, once a week for an hour um, to have a dog that is well-mannered, leash-trained, um, has some obedience manners, won't dart out the door when you open it, won't jump all over visitors when they come or house guests, um, and giving you the resources that you need to be a proper um, effective pack leader are worth its weight in gold. I, I just simply require it now. Um, used to kind of leave it up to the um, owners, but um, I had one person who bought a dog from us and didn't take it anywhere. Just kept it at home, and it was a sweet little dog at home, but... Um, I mean, they literally didn't take it off the proverbial farm, quote unquote, and um, she's an anxious dog, even going to the vet. She's anxious going on car rides, um, and it's um, kind of inhumane to a dog to not provide proper socialization and training. So we work really hard with our puppies here. Um, from the time they're born, we use a lot. We utilize the puppy culture method and um, a lot of the monks of New Skeet methodology um, in our um, training and foundational um, approach to giving these puppies the best start. That's best, the best start that they can have um, for neurological stimulation and development. Um, for moving through all the developmental stages. Um, hands down, bar none, our puppies are some of the most socialized and um, most well-mannered dogs. Um, we get compliments all the time. We have veterinarians call us. We have trainers call us and compliment us. Um, having put their faith back in a breeder. Um, 
Some other things that we do, of course, our puppies um, are vaccinated at seven and 10 weeks of age, um, a very gentle approach to vaccination. Um, we don't over vaccinate. Um, and we'll talk about vaccination schedules later, but I just wanted to briefly touch on that. Our puppies are also microchipped. Um, they come um, with some very gentle obedience introduction, meaning they've had a leash on before, um, a collar and a leash on. They have been introduced to crate training, um, and we start that around the five to six week stage. And I'll talk about our approach to crate training um, and housebreaking later um, in another video. But um, suffice it to say, when our puppies arrive in your home at the 10 to 12 week mark, um, they um, have been exposed to a lot of things and it makes for the transition, it's just a smooth transition. You don't have whiny, um, clingy, um, scared, fearful puppies. You have confident, um, adaptable, fun-loving puppies who are ready for the next adventure. Um, we also litter box train. That is something that the monks of New Skeet um, I'd actually been doing it for a long time because my very first litter, I paper trained and it was a disaster, not just for me, but for the puppies that I sent to new homes. Um, they had this texture preference for things that were flat and like carpet or the floor. <laughs> and so it was terrible housebreaking these puppies. And I thought there's got to be a different way. And so I began um, to notice that early on in the whelping box, puppies would choose to eliminate in one corner and sleep in another. So I began to provide, at first I tried um, shredded newspaper and that was a mess. And then I tried um, shredded computer paper and that was a mess. And then I tried um, pine shavings and that was great except it was getting stuck in their fur and then tracked all over my house. Um, which we just tolerated for a couple of litters. Um, and then I, because I'm a farm girl, I had this brilliant notion that I would use, um, pelleted, um, pelleted pine bedding that we use in the horse stalls. And it's odor free. It doesn't get stuck in fur and it just makes life so much easier. So Around 21 days of age, our puppies have the pelleted pine bedding in a litter box that they can relieve themselves in. And they also have um, an area to sleep and eat and play. And um, usually, like I said, around the 21 to 27 day mark, they're completely litter box trained. And the transition from our home to yours is made much, much easier um, because of that, because, um, if you have to work or if you're gone from the home during the day, it doesn't preclude you from owning a dog. Um, you can use an exercise pen with a litter box and, um, they can relieve themselves instead of regressing in crate training or, um, having to worry to rush home, um, and everybody's stressed. Um, it's just a wonderful tool to use to be able to, um, have your puppy relieve themselves. I have people who own our Lagoto. They live on a yacht and their puppies permanently, their dog permanently uses the litter box. I have several families in, um, big cities, LA, New York, um, where they live in high rises, um, and, there's no grass. So they use the litter box. And, um, however, in your average family, it's, um, usually about a 30 day transition and you're not using it anymore, but about 50% of my families go straight to crate training at the 10 to 12 week mark when their puppies are going home. And about the other 50% continue to use the litter box. And usually two to four weeks is all that's necessary, um, to get, um, some bladder development and, um, some neurological development underway so that um, housebreaking and crate training can continue without disruption. Um, a couple of other things that we use, I mentioned um, puppy culture 
and I love, love, love puppy culture. Um, you will see an automatic difference if you've owned a dog before. You'll see an automatic difference. You will be amazed. It will be a breath of fresh air to own a puppy that is a puppy culture puppy. Um, we also use um, the monks of New Skeet. And I know there's some people who have um, dismissed some of their um, teaching. Um, I say don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. They've got some great ideas. The um, first one um, is just raising a puppy in a natural way. Um, something that um, mom, their mom dog, their doggy mom, um, would do. Um, raising them in a natural a natural way, um, quiet, um, peaceful, calm environments for the first couple of days, and then just regular life after that. And of course, the litter box training is in the Monks of New Skeet, but like I said, I'd been doing it for years before I read about it in a book, and here I thought I'd come up with something brilliant. <laughs> it was the Monks of New Skeet. Um, a couple other books that we recommend, um, Smarter Than You Think. Um, the guy has some crazy notions, especially about, um, diet. Um, he is a proponent of, a proponent of, um, cheap dog food. Ugh. We'll talk about food later, but don't feed your dog cheap dog food. You don't have to feed $80 a bag dog food, but again, we'll talk about that later in another video. Um, another book, um, Good Dogs, uh, good owners, great dogs. A um, couple of things that I really like about that book are um, he talks about a schedule and we send all our puppies home on a schedule. Um, he talks about um, giving your dog a lot of exercise and one of the things you'll hear me say a lot is tired dogs make great dogs. Meaning if your dog has adequate exercise um, you're not going to have discipline issues. Um, if you're meeting their energy needs, which isn't hard to do with a Legoto. Now, having said that, are there Legoto that are hyper? Yes, but they don't go in my companion homes. They go in my, um, agility homes or my confirmation homes, or they stay here. Um, so those are a couple of things. And people ask me all the time too about, um, Cesar Milan. Um, I love the phrase that he has coined, um, where he talks about being a calm, assertive pack leader. I love the fact that he has introduced the notion to, um, companion owners of consistency. Um, I love what he has done to provide instruction and education for people who own small dogs. Um, a lot of times people with small dogs do not adequately train them because guess what? They just pick them up, carry them around. It's really easy. Except then you have a dog who has been positively reinforced on a negative behavior, which is, um, all I have to do is stay close to mom or dad. And they view that picking up, um, and being held all the time. They become very possessive of their doggy mom or the doggy dad. And so you see very poorly behaved, um, chihuahuas and um, losses and other small breeds. Um, so I like what he's done in regard to that. What I have trouble with is that he has, um, erroneously given the notion that every dog can be rehabilitated. And that's sad to me because a lot of dogs existence, um, is, is sad. And, um, I think they're plagued with anxiety and plagued with a poor foundation that creates a lot of fear and anxiety. Um, and I think that in a 30 minute or even an hour long show, you're not seeing all the outtakes. Um, so Cesar is okay to watch or read about. Um, just like I said, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but don't take it all as gospel. Um, so you have called me, maybe you have filled out our questionnaire. We have talked again. We've exchanged references. 
I have um, given you access to our contracts so you can um, find out a little bit more about what we expect and what you get in return. Um, and we've had um, some fairly in-depth conversations about what you're looking for in a Legoto or a dog. Because um, not everybody should have a Legoto. Um, although I think they are an ideal dog for a lot of people. Um, but I'm a little biased. Um, you know, they're hypoallergenic. They're the right size. They are um, easily trained. Um, especially if you follow what what we talk about with regard to socialization and um, training, you know, puppy class and obedience class. Um, we don't expect our, our companion owners to, you know, compete in obedience or compete in any other venue. Although we've had a lot of families who take that first uh, um, beginner obedience class, um, basic obedience class, and they, they get hooked. They're like, this is fun. And it's a great family um, a great family activity. Um, so we've had an in-depth discussion about lifestyle, um, uh, you know, the average day in the life of your family, and we're all feeling pretty good. You feel like I'm your breeder, and I feel like um, you are the family for one of our puppies. At that point, you would place a reservation um, with a reservation fee, um, and you would complete um, our reservation form, you'd be on our list. Um, at that point, I add you to our email distribution list, um, so that you know what's happening and when, um, who's coming in heat, um, when they've been bred, when they've had their ultrasound, when they've had their x-ray, and when the puppies are born. Um, and you become part of the two by two family. And um, like I've said before, we have many people who um, have more than one of our dog. They've come back, which is a huge feather in our cap. Um, so that's a little bit about us and our process. And we will be making some more videos on a multitude of other things. So peace out and have a great day.